What's something from the 90s you miss? Arcades. Big, noisy arcades. Full of actual video games. Whose graphics were 20 times better than what you could get at home. And the machines took coins. Not this bullspeep refillable card system, that is why I'm more of a blatant ripoff. Being able to act goofy without having anyone record it and share with the world. It'll never forget watching a last day of school video from June 2001, and while there's a lot of differences especially in style and fashion, hands down the biggest difference was the relative novelty all the students and teachers gave to the video camera. Like, only this one guy decided to bring in the camera. There were no phones or other recording devices at the time, so it was so cute seeing someone walk up to him, and then their eyes go wide, and they say oh oh oh, a camera. Being recorded was not the norm. And shoot you dim in my late 20s still, but June 2001 feels like yesterday to me time just f peeping moves on your undefined. The excitement of watching a TV show with your friends at a certain time, and if you missed missed it. We used to have friends a night in college. A bunch of us would gather and watch the shows together. Do people even have watch parties for shows anymore? I feel like Game of Thrones was the last gasp for that. I miss the lack of interconnectivity. Like, my summer camp friends were different from school friends. And I didn't really see my summer camp friends outside of July and August. Everything was distinct. When I went from western New York to New Jersey to see family, it was basically like being on another planet. I think I like everything being more connected. But that sense of distinctness is something I miss. I feel this way about shopping, as shallow as that might sound. I feel like you can get any product anywhere now. I don't mean speak like appliances, obviously that's fine. But little knickknacks and decorations are now ubiquitous. The interconnectivity of shopping has made everything interchangeable and uniqueness is dead. It used to be that, if you went to a different area of the world or even your country, and found something cool, you could bring it back, and feel like you had something special. I don't even want to buy decorations anymore, because it all feels not only mass produced, but you can't even trust little stores with curios, you can definitely find the same stuff with an internet search. I now literally wait until craft fairs to buy any decorations for my home, and make sure it's something that person made, and not something they are just middle manning. I got a house in 2019, and it's still only half decorated, but to me that's preferable to filling it with stuff that you get at Target that everyone else has. I don't judge people for having mass made things, but it just feels so soulless to me, and isn't what I want at my house. Luckily houseplants are always unique individuals, so I have a lot of those lol. Sometimes I miss the internet from the 90s. It was less stressful, if that makes sense. I'm so glad that the dumbest speep I said as a teenager is hidden away on some defunct video game forums under a screen name that isn't even close to my real name. I feel for today's kids, who know that if they ever do anything noteworthy with their lives, Someone will dig through their old tweets, and be like yeah, but look at the speep this guy said as a freshman in high school. Saturday morning TV. TGIF night 2 lol. Video games that aren't online, and not having to sign into 3 accounts to play any game. I have my computer set to manually connect to the internet. I still have to sign into Steam, to play a game that isn't dependent in an active connection. Thankfully there is an offline mode for Steam, but I shouldn't have to sign in in the first place if the game doesn't require a password. Then the game makes you wait for a 25 GB update to download and install after you sign in. I remember feeling good about myself. If you were good at something people would let you know that, and you also always knew that one kid who was exceptional at a specific game, that teen who could do awesome tricks on the skate, or a friend who had the most beautiful handwriting you've ever saw, and other things like that, that were special to you, because they felt that they meant something, and they actually did, because you could be watching that level of ability for the last time on your life. Today everything has been mastered by a lot of people constantly displaying it on the internet. We have 24 over 7. 
one click away. Video footage we can play over and over of them being incredibly awesome on it. And I think it frustrates people. You're never really satisfied on what you're doing, because deep down you know you'll probably be just another 1 in 7 billion. And you're not really paying attention to people anymore either, because it really doesn't matter. Whatever it is that they're doing. You can watch someone doing it better on the internet, how many times you want. Anyway, things used to mean something. I miss that. This made me nostalgic and sad simultaneously. The original release of Pokemon cards. Those were the f-peeping best. My niece is big into Pokemon now. And she just got a speep load of cards for her birthday. Made me want to start collecting them again. But I look up the packs from my youth and their astronomical prices. Ah well. It's due to the scalpers buying out everything. And the company can't keep up with the demand unfortunately. It's been like this for several months, and as someone who casually collects Pokemon cards, I've been so upset not being able to get any of the new series. My youth. Actual 90s aesthetic. It was extreme and alternative. Not family friendly wacky or dystopian like a lot of people think when they see an 80s aesthetic. Example. The entire aesthetic of Nickelodeon in the 90s. Slime and extreme speep. I forgot about the green slime. That seemed a part of everyday life, if you watched Nickelodeon. Who's getting it today? Clearly Canadian sparkling water. It came back not long ago, but was limited release, and I could never get any. Being considered smart, not weird, for refusing to make your viral identity known online. Thank you. When I was a early teen in the late 90s, I was told over and over to never put your real information out there. It blows my mind that that is completely normal now. The original Jolt Cola. Not knowing Cosby was such a piece of speep. Being young and relatively healthy. Jolt. A free cola. Search. OK Soda. Being social with people felt so different and authentic. My friends would sometimes just drop by to see if I was home to say hi. We could pick up the phone and have our long conversations. It felt like text message cheapened that. The lesser dependence on technology seemed to cultivate more genuine friendships, but that was just my experience. Yeah I've been thinking about that lately. I see. My three best friends a handful of times this year. Like two or three times each. But we are in a group yet and that's how we stay in touch. It's kinda pacifying. Tamagotchis. I used to have one on a watch of a dinosaur. Full size frosted strawberry pop tarts. They're, like, half the thickness these days. That and eating them while watching back to back episodes of Saved by the Bell on Saturday mornings. Good times. Are they really smaller? I could have sworn they were thick enough ones that when warmed you could break off the sides and slide them apart for two open faced pastries, but last time I tried it didn't work, or the jam thickness was so light it wasn't worth it. My parents. Movies. A lot my favorite movies are mid-sized thrillers from the 90s. A lot of big actors, but not huge spectacles. That segment is dying out. You have huge blockbusters for international markets. Some prestige period pieces. Comedies and indies. And then there are TV shows. But the sort of Harrison Ford's wife is missing. Again films are severely lacking thesis days. Colorful translucent electronics. Oh yeah that purple N64 controller. No social media. Not always being available. Friends just randomly stopping by your house. Much less political divisiveness. Yeah friends randomly stopping by was awesome. Nowadays nobody you care about will ring your doorbell unannounced. Makes the sims feel unrealistic to me with how many people visit an announced lol. The fact that you had to gather with friends to hang around and start conversations. Not just use your phone and text the whole time. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and like the video.